Episode 34 of Wasteland Weapon Essex, the AX-90 Plasma Gun. Now, the name AX-90 might not be the official name of this weapon, but it is the closest nomenclature I can find that is related to this plasma gun. The AX-90 first appeared in Fallout 4 and has reappeared in Fallout 76, Fallout the board game, and Fallout Wasteland Warfare. This plasma gun is not a singular weapon, like other plasma-based weaponry, but instead a highly modular platform where the basic receiver is used to make multiple different weapons. It can be configured into a plasma rifle, a plasma pistol, a plasma PDW, a plasma assault rifle, a plasma sniper rifle, a plasma shotgun, and even a plasma flamethrower. This plasma gun, unlike the previous plasma weapons, doesn't use microfusion cells, but instead uses dedicated plasma cartridges. They are inserted into the top of the gun very much like an end block clip used during World War I and World War II era firearms like the Austro-Hungarian Steyr M95 or the more well-known M1 Grand. The biggest question in the room is who made this weapon? The Fallout 3 and New Vegas plasma rifle was made by Robco after they stole the design from Poseidon Energy. But there's no real lore I can find about the Fallout 4 plasma weapon. We don't know anything of where it comes from. I do have some theories, and some of these theories are probably reaching, but Bethesda makes little to no lore for their weapons of the Fallout universe. So that means we often have to speculate and come up with our own theories. So you have to treat it almost like how Dark Souls lore works. Now the first of these theories I have is this is just another plasma weapon designed by Poseidon Energy. After the first one got stolen from them, they went back to the drawing board and made a better one using dedicated plasma cells instead of microfusion cells. Knowing that if a competitor stole the design again, they couldn't easily make the power source. Now there is some evidence for this. You see, in Fallout 76, there is a variant of the plasma gun known as the Enclave plasma gun that is more powerful and has a different skin. Now this is not a one-of-a-kind weapon. The Enclave sells these in the White Springs Bunker. You can buy as many of them as you want, really. Now, the Enclave and Poseidon have a very close relationship. And in West Virginia, Poseidon Energy has a very heavy presence with three nuclear power plants. And of the theories I have, this is the most practical of them, as it has the most supporting evidence. For the second theory, this weapon was again made by Robco. After Robco stole the original design, they made a more advanced version later on. I have very little evidence for this one other than Robco had acquired another company known as Repcon. Repcon had been working heavily with plasma-based engines for rockets. Now having access to better plasma technology would have let Robco produce a better plasma weapon. And you're probably thinking, why is a robotics company and a public utility company making weapons? Well, this type of thing isn't really that far from reality. Let's look at the current U.S. military weapon trials for the next generation service weapon. Of the three competitors, only one is a firearm manufacturer, and that is Sig Sawyer. Besides Sig, we have Textron, who makes things like private aircraft and snowmobiles. And the third competitor is General Dynamics. You know, the company that makes those crazy advanced robots, like the robot dog and the ones that walk upstairs, and like the humanoid robots. And if you want another example, I mean, General Electric made the M85 machine gun, which was a short-lived replacement for the M2 Browning for mounting in vehicles. They were also the original manufacturer of the M61 Vulcan 20mm. So, non-firearm companies making firearms is not that big of a deal. If you know how to do math, you can make a gun. It's really not that difficult, you're just dealing with pressure. The final theory is the plasma gun in question could have also been made by a third company that we just don't know of. I mean, we know multiple other companies in the Fallout universe had the ability to design and manufacture plasma-based weaponry. We know Glock had the G86 Plasma Defender. And I'm actually going to go ahead and put another theory, that this plasma gun was made by Winchester. Because in Fallout 76, when they added the plasma caster back in, it uses plasma cartridges. And we know Winchester made the plasma caster. I mean, really, that's the only thing tying these two weapons together, is that the plasma caster and this plasma gun both use plasma cartridges. 
at least in Fallout 76 they do. I mean, there is some stuff to disprove this theory as there are other plasma-based weapons in the game. You have the Gatling Plasma, which uses plasma cores instead of plasma cartridges. And then recently Bethesda has added another weapon, the Pepper Shaker. Pepper Shaker is a large, kind of heavy shotgun that can be switched between shotgun, laser, or plasma. And when in plasma mode, it just uses plasma cartridges like the plasma caster and the plasma gun. So what are your theories of who made this plasma gun? Really, it could be anyone. It could, it could even be another company like Mass Fusion. We don't know. I mean, Bethesda gave us no info on this thing. Now, we know the pre-war military did use this weapon, or was at least in the testing phase of using this plasma weapon. On the front of the Tesla Science Magazine, we see a T-60 Power Armor Soldier using a jetpack holding a plasma gun in sniper configuration. The front reads, Tomorrow's Technology for Today's Super Soldier. However, I think that the military did adopt it. I mean, let's go back to Fallout 76 again. We're going to be taking a look at another faction the Blood Eagles, because they make very heavy use of the plasma gun, more than any other faction in Fallout 76, even the Enclave. You're probably thinking, what does a drug-crazed group of raiders have to do with the U.S. military? Well, if you don't know the lore of the Blood Eagles, I'm going to give you a very brief overview. The Blood Eagles are a drug-crazed biker gang from the D.C. area. Now, if you don't know, Biker gangs in the U.S. are usually started by former or even active duty military. The Hells Angels, the Sons of Satan, the Warlocks, and many more were all founded by former or active duty military. Gangs in the U.S. and Mexico tend to recruit former military due to their level of expertise. I mean, the Mexican cartel, Los Zetas, while not a biker gang, even managed to get Mexican special forces from the Cuerpo de Fuerza Especiales. Sorry if I butchered Spanish there. They got these special forces to desert to the cartel because they got paid better. So the Blood Eagles being former military makes a lot of sense. I mean, if you look at the Blood Eagles, several of their members are wearing military fatigues. You even have some wearing the tactical ops under armor. And even then, some can be found with the marine combat armor. I believe... The Blood Eagles are the only faction in Fallout 76 to make use of the Marine Combat Armor. They also use highly advanced weaponry. They have Gatling lasers, miniguns, and most importantly, plasma guns. One of their members, Tylee Lang, even has a gauze pistol. If the Blood Eagles weren't so drug crazed, they could honestly become one of the most powerful factions in the early years of the Wasteland. Fun fact, the name Blood Eagle refers to a very old Norse torture method where they would pull the lungs out through the back to look like a pair of wings. That doesn't have anything to do with what we're talking about today, but I thought I would put that mental image in your head. And since we are talking about Fallout 76 and the Plasma Gun, here are some other factions that use it in the Appalachian Wasteland. We already know about the Enclave, but the Brotherhood of Steel Initiates can be found using plasma rifles. But it's very rare. Though none of the main three from the Mariposa base use plasma weapons. They tend to stick to lasers. Honestly, the weapons the Initiates tend to have just seem to be completely randomized. I mean, some have laser weapons, and even then, some will have pipe guns. I mean, really, the Brotherhood of Steel has pipe guns. I mean, I get the Expeditionary Force is probably desperate for arms for all the new Initiates, but, pipe guns? Think about it, in Fallout 76, a drug-crazed biker gang is better armed than a militarized faction obsessed with technology. Now, I'm unable to find any evidence if the first Appalachian Brotherhood used a plasma gun. I mean, trying to find every Appalachian Brotherhood member's corpse to check would be very tedious. Especially since Bethesda has removed several corpses from the game and the Fallout 76 wiki is also very incomplete. And I have to ask, does content that was once in the game and then later removed still count as canon? Anyway, the Blue Ridge Caravan Company has plasma guns, specifically Ares, one of their guards. 
A unique plasma gun, Mind Over Matter, is acquired during the Brotherhood of Steel DLC, Steel Dawn, if you recruit Colin Putnam to the Brotherhood. Mind Over Matter is a 3-star legendary featuring the Ghoul Slayer's ability, giving it 50% more damage to ghouls, as well as the Hitman's and Steadfast ability, giving it 25% more damage when aiming and 50% damage resistance when aiming. Now, he doesn't use this weapon, instead actually having a Tricentennial Edition 10mm pistol. So, the Tricentennial Edition paints are canon. Does that mean that the Brotherhood gives you this plasma gun for recruiting him despite the main three not using plasma weapons? Now, alternatively, if you recruit his brother, you will get a unique Super Sledge, which is another weapon they don't seem to use. Instead, they have their own new melee weapon to the series, the Warglaive. Now, there is another very unique plasma gun in Fallout 76. It is known as Slugbuster. Slugbuster can only be acquired by siding with the Raiders during the Wastelanders questline. It is found in Vault 94 by Ra Ra, a Raider child. It actually features four legendary abilities. One of them is Hidden. It features the Anti-Armor ability, which gives it better armor penetration. Lucky, giving it better critical damage. Lightweight, reducing the weight of the weapon. And it has the hidden effect of Ra Ra's Plasma Gun, giving it 20% less AP usage. So vault or the Secret Service was using these plasma guns. Now, before we move on from Fallout 76, there is a new modification that doesn't exist in Fallout 4. That is the Pulse Receiver. This allows plasma weapons to drain fusion cores. And that's about it for Fallout 76. Now we will go on to Fallout 4. The biggest user of the plasma gun in the Commonwealth is the military LARPing mercenaries known as the Gunners. They have a lot of plasma guns. Most likely from raiding military locations, as they are also in search of technology, just like the Brotherhood. They just have a different plan for what they're going to do with that technology. Now, the Gunners are not a small faction. They have access to vertebrates, power armor, and can even operate throughout the Commonwealth and even into the DC area. Speaking about the DC Wasteland, we're going to go off on a bit of a tangent. It's still related to Fallout 4. Now, I have recently been able to buy the Fallout 4 Creation Club add-on, Capital Wasteland Mercenaries. This add-on will bring you to the Capital Wasteland, or really just a small portion of it. You find out that the GNR Plaza has basically been abandoned by Three Dog and the Brotherhood, and in place there is a new faction known as the Good Fighters, who are trying to keep Three Dog's message alive. However, Talon Company has pushed them out. And Talon Company has gotten a big upgrade since Fallout 3. They now have several sets of T-45 power armor, heavier, heavier weaponry like miniguns, and plasma guns. The Fallout 4 style plasma gun. Where they got all this equipment is hard to say. They were in contact with the gunners. So they could have got this equipment from them. Or maybe they scavenged it all from the Brotherhood after they left some of it behind. Speaking of that, what did happen to all the T-45 the Brotherhood was using in Fallout 3 when they switched to T-60? Did they just abandon it? Like in a big power armor graveyard? Did they scrap it all? Sell it off? I don't know. Post all your theories down below. I mean, that would explain how Talon Company was able to get T-45 power armor. So we'll go back to the mainline Fallout 4. Besides the Gunners, you can find the Plasma Gun being sold by multiple vendors, like Cleo and Good Neighbor. They are also sold by the Institute. The Institute, in fact, has their own unique Plasma Gun, Experiment 18-A. Experiment 18-A features the rapid legendary effect, making it shoot faster. Despite this, the Institute does not make use of Plasma-based weapons. Another unique is bought from the Brotherhood of Steel, the Sentinel Plasma Caster. This one has the instigating legendary effect, making it do double damage on the first hit, if the target has full health. Now, there is supposed to be another unique sold by the Brotherhood of Steel, the AX-90 Fury. I cannot tell if this weapon actually exists. One Fallout Guide says it does, another Fallout Guide says it doesn't. The wiki has an archive page about it, but not a current page. And the Cheat Terminal mod allows me to spawn it in. 
So I don't know if this weapon's real or not, but AX90 is also the closest thing to a weapon nomenclature that I can find for the plasma gun, so that's what I am going to call this weapon, the AX90. But with that, we now head to the follow-up board game. There is no lore from the card of this weapon, it is obtained just from the shop, so you just buy it. However, the playable character, known as the Enclave Deserter, who is part of the New California expansion to the game, is holding an AX90 on his model. So, it's kind of retcon that the West Coast Enclave has these plasma guns. And that's about it for the board game. There's really no lore about the weapon here, other than the Enclave guy has it. Now, for Wasteland Warfare, we find another set of unaligned power armor users. But what makes a man turn unaligned? Lust for gold? Power? Or were they just born with a heart full of non-conformality? It is kind of interesting that this random T-45 unit has the Fallout 4 plasma gun, while in Wasteland Warfare, the Enclave pieces have the Fallout 3 style plasma rifle. But Frank Horrigan exists in Wasteland Warfare and is crushing a Fallout 4 style Deathclaw. But the standard units of Enclave that I mentioned are East Coast Enclave. So does this imply that Frank Horrigan survives Fallout 2? I don't know, you can debate that down below. I'm about weapons, not factions. <laughs> but this does show us that both the Fallout 3 and Fallout 4 plasma guns do exist at the same time. So, not a retcon. Or maybe it was a retcon, as the art book it does say, We considered the designs of the plasma and laser guns of Fallout 3 to be pretty much perfect, so we didn't alter them any more than necessary. This was mainly an exercise in adding some fidelity in detailing and converting to the modular system. So it could be that the Fallout 4 one was a retcon of the Fallout 3 plasma gun, but then Wasteland Warfare retconned the retcon and now they both exist at the same time. Anyway, that will be all for this episode. See everyone next time. Make sure to subscribe to this channel for more Fallout weapon lore, as well as my main channel, Trooper Fofo, if you just want some general gaming content. Alright, see everybody later. Bye.